Uh, back on page I-12, uh, muscles that move our forearm. So the muscles that move our forearm uh, insert, they attach to either the radius or ulna of the forearm. By attaching to the radius or ulna, they pull on the radius and ulna and thus move our forearm. There are three muscles that flex, that cause flexion at the elbow. The major, most important one is the biceps brachii. Uh, it is in this picture, the biceps brachii is pictured right here. Everybody knows the biceps brachii muscle. When people say, go ahead, make a fist, let's see your arms. You know, that, that with the, the bulge that they're looking for is the biceps brachii. And the way you make it bulge the, uh, is you flex your arm. That's what it does. It flexes the arm. It originates uh, on two different locations. On the scapula, it inserts on the radius. When it contracts, it pulls the radius closer to the scapula, causing flexion uh, at the elbow. It also, and you need to know this, this is a major muscle, it also supinates the hand. We learned that term previously. Supinate means to rotate your hand so that the palm of the hand is up as if you were holding a bowl of soup in your hand. That's to supinate. So the biceps brachii, not, bless you, not only flexes at the uh, elbow, flexes the forearm, but also supinates the hand. So if somebody can't supinate their hand, they may have a problem with the, uh, activating the biceps brachii muscle. There are two synergists or helpers uh, with the biceps brachii. They are the brachialis and the brachioradialis. The brachialis is this small muscle here. This is the brachioradialis. If we look on our one-page handout near the bottom of side one, uh, in bold print is the biceps brachii, originating on the scapula, inserting on the radius. It flexes uh, the forearm and supinates the hand. Uh, not in bold print are the brachialis, which originates on the humerus, inserts on the ulna, also flexes the forearm, and the brachioradialis that originates on the humerus, inserts on the radius, and also uh, flexes the forearm. Those are synergists. Those are helpers. Uh, back on our picture, the brachialis is on the lateral side of the arm. It actually inserts on the ulna, which is uh, right here. But it's hard to see that where it inserts. It would be also difficult on the cat because it looks like the brachioradialis grows right out of it. It's OK, as long as you understand how to recognize these muscles. Now, the brachioradialis originates in the lower part of the humerus. It inserts at the distal end of the radius. It's a very unique attachment. It's used as an anatomic landmark. Uh, and it's called brachioradialis, because it inserts way at the distal end of the radius. On the uh, I-13, the triceps brachii. The triceps brachii is a muscle located uh, kind of on the lateral and posterior, the side and the back side, posterior of your upper arm. It actually has three tendons of origin. It has a long head uh, that originates on the scapula. Yes, you have to know that. And two uh, tendons of origin uh, originating in two different places of the humerus, called the lateral and medial head. It inserts on the ulna, on the back side of the ulna. This is the muscle that extends the forearm. So here's all we're saying. What's the major muscle that flexes biceps. your elbow? The biceps brachii. And what's the only muscle that extends your forearm? The triceps brachii. You have only one. So all you have to do is practice saying biceps brachii, triceps brachii. Biceps brachii flexes, triceps brachii extends. This is page I-15, and now we want to look at muscles that move our hands. The biceps brachii and triceps brachii are causing flexion and extension of our forearm. Now we want to, and of course, the biceps brachii and triceps brachii attached or inserted on the radius of our forearm or ulna of our forearm. So they are pulling on the bones of our forearm. Now we want to look at muscles that move our hands, that move our fingers. And they're inserting 
They're attaching or inserting on the metacarpal bones and phalanges. There are uh, seven muscles that are in the forearm that we're going to learn. There is this group that's labeled the anterior flexor pronator group. And that's because they are located on the front or anterior side of the forearm and hand, anterior, the front side in the anatomic position. And uh, they're called flexor pronator because they either flex the hand or fingers or they pronate the hand. And these four muscles are the flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris, and pronator teres. And I know that our first thought is, oh my God. <laughs> actually, this is going to be much easier than you think. Now, we actually have a picture of these muscles on the previous page, I-14. And I'm going to point them out to you. And we're going to, then I'm going to show you how to try to remember these. All right, so the, in order, in order going from lateral to medial, from the thumb side to the little finger side, from lateral to medial, remember the anatomic position, your thumb is lateral. All right, it goes pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi onaris. We have a cat to learn this on, but of course at home, you don't have a cat to work on. So we're gonna find it on us because we always carry our arms with us. There's a muscle running along the lateral or thumb side of your forearm, and it actually flexes your thumb and that muscle that's running along the thumb or lateral side is called the flexor carpi radialis. Now that's a great name because it flexes the hand and it's running along the radial side. So why don't you flex your thumb and just say flexor carpi radialis. Flexor carpi radialis. You got that? Now, right next to it, running right down the middle of your forearm, right to the palm of your hand, running right down the middle of your form to the palm of your hand. Let's flex our middle fingers, our middle fingers. And in fact, as you flex them, you may see something moving in your middle of your wrist. You see some movement in the middle of your wrist? That muscle is called the palmaris longus. And it goes right to the palm of your hand, the palmaris longus. All right, now, just medial to that, medial, on the little finger side, running down the little finger or ulnar side, right, the ulna is on the little finger side, the ulnar side of your hand, we're going to flex our little finger. And that's called the flexor carpi ulnaris. The flexor carpi, it flexes the hand, carpal, and it's on the ulna or little finger side. So, so far we got three. The flexor carpi radialis that flexes our thumb. The palmaris longus that flexes the middle fingers and the flexor carpi ulnaris that flexes the little finger. See, that's not so bad. Now there's one we skipped. There's one small little muscle. It's a little round muscle. It's a little muscle that's just lateral, just further lateral to the flexor carpi radialis. It's called the pronator teres. We had seen the teres major. The teres major was the little round muscle above the latissimus dorsi. Teres means little round muscle. Here it is. Can you see how small it is? That's it. And it's called pronator teres because it's a little round muscle, teres, that pronates the hand. It rotates the hand down. So its name tells you exactly what it does. It is the antagonist of the biceps brachii, which not only flexes the forearm, but also supinates the hand. So let's kind of identify it. Going from most lateral, most lateral to medial, there's a little round muscle right there, very lateral, the pronator teres that pronates the hand. Right next to it, the flexor carpi radialis that flexes the thumb. Going down the middle to the palm of your hand, the palmaris longus. And then along the ulnar or little finger side is the flexor carpi ulnaris. That wasn't so bad, was it? These are listed right here, and you can see how these muscles, and they have long tendons, and they insert on the uh, metacarpal bones and uh, phalanges. If we look on I-15, so we've talked about these four muscles. The, uh, that was the anterior flexor pronator group. And you'll notice that uh, 
then I wrote the posterior extensor supinator group. And really, the, it re, really just the posterior extensor group is really all it is. There are three muscles on the po, a posterior side, right? Anterior is the front side of our forearm, posterior is the back side. While I did not include a picture of these three, obviously they are pictured in your lab manual, but let's just learn them. We've got our arm with us. Let's see if we can learn them. The name of the three are extensor carpi radialis, digitorum, extensor digitorum, and extensor carpi ulnaris. So now we're looking on the back side of your forearm. So what we're, we have a muscle that extends your thumb. It's running right along the thumb or radial side. Extend your thumb. It's called the extensor carpi radialis. So here's what I'd like you to do. Flex your thumb and extend your thumb. And when you flex it, it's the flexor carpi radialis. And when you extend your thumb, it's the extensor carpi radialis. All right? So can we do that? We can flex it and extend it. So we've talked about flexor carpi radialis that flexes the thumb and extensor carpi radialis that extends the thumb. Let's, uh, on the little finger side, on the little finger side, back side of your arm, little finger ulnar side, we can extend our the little finger. That's the extensor carpi ulnaris. Now, what was the muscle that flexed our little finger? The flexor carpi ulnaris. So let's flex our little finger. Kind of hard, but flexor carpi ulnaris. Let's extend it. Extensor carpi ulnaris. Only one last one. Uh, the muscle that extends the middle digits is called the extensor digitorum. It just means it extends the middle digits. It's actually technically called the extensor digitorum communis together because it really could, could extends uh, the, middle, the middle three fingers. What was the muscle that flexed the middle fingers? The palmaris longus that went right to the palm on the front side. What's the muscle that extends the middle fingers? The extensor digitorum. So I've just taken a subject that you might have thought was really complicated, it wasn't that bad. So I think we can all agree that while we don't have it down yet, it's certainly doable. Uh, let's look again on I-14. On I-14, we've been talking about these muscles in our forearm. In addition, we have some intrinsic muscles of the hand. You'd say, excuse me? <laughs> the word intrinsic, and it's written on the next page, we'll see it, means they are inside the hand itself. The muscles that we had just spoken of were called extrinsic muscles. You'd say, whoa, I'm, I'm confused. OK, let's look on I-15. At the very top of I-15, can you see what, how these were listed? Extrinsic muscles of the hand. Why were they called that? Because they're actually located outside the hand, right? The flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, the, these are in our forearm. They insert on the hand, but the muscle itself is located in our forearm. But there are also intrinsic muscles. At the bottom of the page, can you see where it says intrinsic muscles of the hand? These are inside the hand itself. And these muscles really allow the fine motor movement of our fingers. So we divide them into the palmar flexors and the dorsal extensors. This is exactly like we saw in the forearm. We divide them into three groups, the thenar group, the intermediate group, and the hyperthenar group. You'd say, excuse me? Let's look on the previous page. So you will notice that at the base of your thumb, right below your thumb, there's a kind of a chunk of muscle there. All right, it's more prominent in some people than others. That's called the thenar mu uh, muscle. That's the flexor thenar muscle. That flexes your thumb. Because if anybody's had a physical anthropology class, there are a number of very unique uh, abilities that we as humans have over all other primates. One of them, it's not the most important, but certainly one of the unique things we can do that no other monkey or ape can do is we can touch our thumb to every single finger. That's called an opposable thumb. And that allows us, because we can take our thumb and touch it to every single finger, we have very fine finger movement, and that allows us to text message. Right, so, uh, right below the little finger, not much less muscular, is the hypothenar flexor. Hypothenar, that that's, refers to the little finger. 
if thenar is the thumb, hypothenar is the little finger. Okay? And so that flexes the little finger. You know, sometimes we kind of move our little finger and we figure we can barely move it. Actually, you know, for anybody who learned actual touch typing, th does anybody know which finger you use to hit the letter uh, A key? The little left pinky. And so you're talking about one of the, the, either the number one or number two most frequent letters in the, used in the alphabet. And the, when you're typing, you actually use the little finger to hit it, that key. So uh, when you're speed typing, you're actually using those little fingers actually a lot. But there's uh, muscles in the middle of a palm of our hand called the intermediate group that have per permit fine flexion. A uh, fine motor control over flexing our little fingers. Uh, on the back side, and again, I did not include a picture on the back, uh, we have the thenar extensor that extends our thumb, the intermediate extensor, and the uh, hypothenar extensor. So just as we have the thenar flexor, the intermediate flexor, and the hypothenar flexor that flex on the palm of our hand, we have the extensors. Now, we all notice that that flexor of our thumb is pretty, you can, it's prominent, right? You can see it, that chunk of muscle at the base of your thumb. You don't have that prominent muscle on the back side, do you? All of our strength is in flexing. We have very little strength in extending. If you had a contest where you say, okay, I'm going to clench my fist, I'm going to close it, I'm going to flex my hand into a fist, and challenge anybody to open your hand. Do you think they'll be able to open your hand? No way. We have so much power in flexing. All of our power is flexion in, in grasping, in forming our hand into a fist. So if you tighten your hand as tight as you can, nobody can open that up. I mean, they could shoot you, but they couldn't use their <laughs> finger. They couldn't use their fingers to pry your fingers apart. On the other hand, if you extend your hand and you challenge anybody, go ahead, make my hand close, they will easily close your hand. We have no strength in extending our hand. Does everybody follow that? All of our power is in flexion, in, in clenching, in grasping. We have no strength in extending. Now, here's the uh, philosophical lesson from this. Have you ever noticed what position do newborn babies have their hands? They're always in the flexed position. Did anybody ever know that? No. Their hands are always flexed because they're always taking. They're very needy. They need everything, and when they don't get what they want, they cry. And their crying is so irritating to an uh, irritating sound, we give in and, and do it for them because they need everything. Now, do you know what position the hands are when somebody dies? They're totally open because you take nothing with you. So when you're born, you're born as a taker and you leave as a giver. Whatever you had in life, whatever you accrued with that car, that, uh, that computer, whatever it was, you ain't taking it with you.